The answer is that we are striving to help parents best understand the risk of exposure that their children face. I think it is important that I explain why I feel this is the correct approach. As a parent, learning that a teacher or other student who were never in the school while infectious and contracted COVID-19 at a party or while on vacation does not help me understand if my child is at risk. In a school context, there is risk for students and staff only when an infectious person has been present that they may have come in contact with. The best way to assess the safety of schools is to track and monitor the number of cases and schools where an infectious case was present, as well as schools where transmission has happened on that site. Other numbers are not relevant to school transmission risk and simply cause confusion and anxiety. We have always committed to complete transparency to all those connected to a school when a case is identified. That is why mandatory notification is in place for all school cases. All parents, students, and staff who are part of a school community where an infectious case is identified have been receiving and will continue to receive an alert directly from the school whenever one of these situations is identified. There are times when a school sends out an alert before the public health investigation is complete, and so some of these alerts may in fact go out before we understand that there was no infectious case in the school. This can cause a discrepancy in our numbers. We have committed to being responsive and adapting our return to school plan to meet students, parents, and teachers' needs. That is why today we are launching a new online map to help parents track where there may be a risk in their children's school. The map will list every school where there have been two or more cases in a school setting within a 14-day period where disease could have been acquired or transmitted in the school. So I want to be clear about an example where we would not put it on the map. So for example, if you had a family that had two children that went to the same school um, and one of those children became ill and perhaps that individual had uh, exposed uh, or had been infectious at the school while they attended, uh, but then they were kept home as well as their sibling and their sibling developed COVID at a later point, we wouldn't necessarily consider that to be a school outbreak because the transmission event did not happen in the school, it happened in the home. Uh, or if there are two cases, again, in, in a family uh, where there was no exposure in the school, even if both of those cases attended the school, that's not a school outbreak. We're really focused on where is there risk within that school environment? Uh, because that's what's relevant, again, to be able to understand what kinds of um, measures we need to continue and what, if any, measures we may need to implement going forward uh, that are additional to what we're currently doing. Mm -hmm.